Mr. Trek here with another exciting truck review. Today we have the 2016 Nissan Titan XD with that Cummins 5 liter V8 diesel and the Ison Automatic 6 speed. I'm here with Kelsey. And how much power do we have? It's got 310 horsepower to 555 torque. Awesome. That ought to give us somewhere. We're going to run around the mountains here and see how it pulls. We're towing a trailer that is 10,400. It's a gooseneck. So we're making progress here. Today's review is brought to you by MrTruck.com and HorseTrailerWorld.com. Come on and join us. <laughs> Now, the trailer we're using for this review of this new 2016 Titan XD is a low trail. It's a 30-foot gooseneck. Of course, this is too big of a trailer for the truck. That's why we only have one water tote on there. So we've got this thing weighted up with the tote and the trailer to 10,400. And it's, you know, it's doing very well. I'm very impressed with how this truck has on the power. Here's a way of, of driving it that I've learned. So it's a few things after three weeks of driving this truck that I, I know about now that, that uh, starting to impress me. But anyway, so small load, big trailer, it's what we've got, it's what we're going to use. But we do have it finally hooked to a gooseneck. The new Titan, the XD, this is a Pro 4X package. They've had a Pro 4X package on their older models. This one is awesome. It's got a lot of different toys in there. Skid plates all the way up through the front bumper. But uh, I want to show you the gooseneck height here. Now, this truck is deeper, it's taller than the last truck. So you want to remember that when hooking up a fifth wheel or a gooseneck trailer. The depth, that's about, uh, it's a little taller depth-wise into the bed than a Ford F-150. It's actually from here to the floor is 21 3 8 number you want to know to see if you have clearance for a gooseneck. This is an easy gooseneck to clear because it's just nothing but a V. There's no canopy up here. But from here down with this trailer at 10,400 pounds at 15% tongue weight, and we've got a payload of about 1,700. We're not using all of that, but this squat is about 3 inches. And from here down, it's 53 and a half inches. So those are the numbers you want to know if you're trying to size this up to your gooseneck or fifth wheel trailer. Okay, Kelsey, show me how these trailer toy mirrors work. Yeah, they fold in and out. This is all manual. We got a manual telescoping and manual folding. But they're nice mirrors for towing. It's got the bottom uh, convex mirror so you can see around the corner with your trailer, see which... Uh, <laughs> part of the road you're hitting when you turn a corner. I How's really, the leg room? Is it got pretty good room? It's got a lot of leg room. A lot of leg room. The seat, oh, the seat I thought came all the way back, but it goes almost all the way back when you turn your key off or on. And then it goes to that set position. But there's, I mean, tall people should have plenty of room in here. They've got... A little bit of everything on the steering wheel, really nice stitching, some aluminum. And then, oh, those are fog lights and a 400 watt, 120 volt AC power switch. Yeah, and that switch is for the one, also one in the bed. Oh, it's for the bed too? Yeah. That's nice. It's a cargo a lamp, you can turn that on and off for the back of it. Is that adjustable headlights, Ken? Yeah, that's what that is. If you're squatting too much, you can get your headlights back out of the trees. Oh, so that's, that's nice. nice. A rear locker and then the hill descent. It does tell me that the low temperature is outside. It is cold outside. Yeah, you kind of knew oh, that, but I guess headlights. it wants to tell us. Is that what, yeah, I've got the headlights probably on. You can take them, shut them clear off. It's that big knob. Got them. Which I like big knobs. And now it's telling you something else. <laughs> it's, huh. it's definitely got a bunch of warnings for us. probably telling you the us. key is the, in my pocket or somewhere. Nope. The door is open. I okay. have the keys. Okay, so it's going to make noise just because the door is open. Okay. This Nissan has a really, really nice back seat. Lots of leg room. Like I said, that seat comes back. So, I mean, even at the farthest setting, you've got lots of knee room. Lots of leg room. Two, two pockets. Oh, that's nice on the back that's, of the seat. I like that's that. That's nice. Two pockets on the back of the seat. We've got a nice cup holder in the middle. Oh, heated and cooled seats in the back. A 120 volt power. Oh, it's got one of those trays. Oh, yeah. yeah, a tray opens up. Makes everything flat again so you can load your seats and put something flat in here. But it looks like it's got locking compartments too. Oh, 
They have a fifth wheel in here, huh? Oh, you got your gooseneck ball, gooseneck greasy ball. bag thing, yeah. Yeah, but at least they give you a bag for this one. That's yeah. their step ahead there. Okay. Compartment to put it in. That's nice. Oh, and that bottom tray locks, too. That bottom that tray locks, yes. yes. I'm going to go to the other side. Okay. So in here, I've got heated and cool seats. 120 volt power. That's really nice, especially if somebody needs to plug something in. We've got cup holders right here in the middle. We've also got the cup holders in the middle of the seat also. Oh yeah, a lot of room back there. A lot of room back here. A lot of space for storage. Oh yeah, look at that. Pull this one out, make everything flat. And then that locks. And this locks. There's a nice, nice, oh look. You can even make it larger. Yeah, divider. So you can get your M16 in there. Way there. You Something. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite that big, but yeah, it's a nice back seat. Yeah. Nice, nice pockets, nice spacing. You can definitely fit so it's five very, grown very, adults in it. Yeah, very usable crew nope. cab, by golly. And you can't just pull them down. There's latches to shut them. Yeah. All right. Nice That's thick nice. seats, too. Those are thick cushions. I like thick that. Thick cushions. They've got child locks. They're the ch child safety seats. That's yeah. always important. They're hidden so nobody can see them. Yeah, the tethers are there. That's good. The tethers are there. Okay, back seat. I really like this back seat. There's lots of room. Yeah, I always have a lot of storage. I end up just throwing it all in the seat to be able to lock it away. It's nice. Yeah, that's that's a nice idea to put a locking compartment down here because if you have guns or something else that you don't want to lock your car for. So this one's kind of a pain. They did put a power outlet in the bed, but it's 110. It is not for the trailer, even though they put a gooseneck in here. So when you got 110, now you got to bungee your cord all the way up into the trailer so it doesn't snag, and then it comes all the way out past the bumper. It's yeah, kind of a pain. A, that's a dangerous place to have it because that can come unplugged or you know get yanked or something. Yeah, it is a pain. It get yanked out, get well, moved. It's, it's the first year. All the stuff is to come. You know, getting closer that's to what they need for gooseneck trailers. They will make it back. Panoramic view. I'm gonna take pictures of this. You can see all the way around the truck. You see where they're at right there? Isn't that cool. the coolest thing? You can see back up, and it'll show you forward. It will show you a little bit of everything. So it's got an all the way around camera too. Yeah, it's a 360 degree camera, and there's all the degrees. And as you back up and you put it, it actually will show you forward too and back. And that is awesome. Heated seats are working now. We're up here in the Rockies. I don't know which national park we're in now. It says put Buckingham Park. Let's shut this backup button off. Oh, they actually came up with a button to turn that off. Yeah, nice. they all do. It just takes us too long to find them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're in there somewhere. I was going to take off my yeah. coat when I was inside here. But... Let's see what I can do. So how much weight are we actually hauling, Kent? We are hauling 10,400 pounds. 10,400 pounds. And what's the max payload on this? Uh, it's like in the 1,700 pound okay. range. Where's my notes? Somewhere in there. should know all this stuff. Okay, the max payload is 1,800. Empty weight of the truck 7,320. And so if you figure your payload and your tongue weight, we still got a little bit of room left on this. Okay. But you've got that huge trailer and... There's no way you're gonna fill up that huge trailer. Right, and I was going to get a horse trailer to do it, but we had this trailer out rolling, and I thought this would kind of amplify what I'm talking about, where you have a nice trailer weight, but you don't have enough payload to actually get there from here. Narrow road, you can see what we're doing here. Nice but narrow this road. This Titan, this is quite quite the truck. I'm actually appreciating it. I've been driving almost three weeks. I drove it. Houston, Texas. I drove it near Phoenix, Arizona. Now we're back in Colorado. And, uh, you know, I'm learning a few things about it. When I first drove this, I thought it had a lot of turbo legs. This has got twin, uh, twin compressors and one turbine and high low pressure. And so that was supposed to eliminate turbo leg. But if you just floor it, it'll sit there and it's got turbo leg. But if you accelerate with Normally. purpose, it'll flat out go. So learning how to, to do that is, is, is something that'll actually speed you up because it does. If you do that right, it does very well in acceleration. We've gone up the mounds that helped uh, you know the fast lane truck folks do that. We pulled this trailer, went up there, and it did, it did excellent climbing the mountain. But uh, I'm more and more impressed with this the more I drive it. And it's got you know, it's got powerful brakes. I mean, these are 14-inch rotors on this. They're you know, a little bigger in the back, I think. But this truck, you know, it's got twin mirrors. This is the Pro 4X package, so it's all set up for everything. So, you know, it's got the gooseneck 
ball in the back and the pucks is actually a Reese setup, so it's all probably identical to the Ford, except for the fact that it has two pucks and a the gooseneck ball. Put a fifth wheel in, it hooks to those three points. If this was a Ford, you'd have five points to hook to it. You'd have four pucks plus the middle. So, of course, those uh, on the Fords are rated a lot higher, and the Ram has a similar setup. But, uh, you know, this truck is doesn't have a full floating axle. That's how you know it's in between the three-quarter ton and the light duty. And it's, you know, it's not the first truck to do that. It's, uh, you know, back in the 80s. I'm an old guy, so I've seen a lot of trucks over the years. And early 80s, all three of Detroit's, the, the Dodge, the GM, and Ford, had a light duty three-quarter ton. And it didn't have a full floating axle, so it's kind of, you know, it was misleading to a lot of people. Thought they were getting a heavy duty truck when they weren't. So you had a semi floating axle rear end on them. They had eight bolts of smaller studs than what the heavy duties did. And, you know, they, they look a little beefier on the GM on some of their lines. They put fender flares on the heavy duties, no fender flares on the light duty three quarter tons. And then Dodge did a similar thing. And then Ford, uh, like in the early 90s, they came out with that 250. It looked just like a 150, same rounded nose that they came out with. But it had seven bolt wheels, so that was a really expensive wheel to find and expensive tires, and it was still just a in-between. So this is not the first in-between truck. They've all done it, all the big three, and, you know, they, they, they've never kept it very long, usually two years, sometimes three. And, you know, the public needed to know what that really was because, you know, you get an eight bolt it's a wheel and you think you've got a heavy duty when in a lot of cases you didn't. So I didn't like the idea of them doing that to the public because they nobody explained that to them. So yeah. people didn't. It was kind of a, a nasty way. Now on Nissan, they tell you what they're doing. This is in between. This is not quite heavy duty and it's a little bit, a little better than a, than a, than a light duty like a half ton, but not quite a heavy duty. Now this truck where it really shines too is with a trailer. It does get better fuel mileage than the gas engines in the light duty class. So that's where it shines in this Pro 4X package with the rear locker and low range with limited slip, the skid plates all over the place. It's got the Bilstein shocks. This does pretty well at that the um, the media launch in Arizona. I mean I had this thing up in a whole bunch of rocks. I actually hit the skid plate three times with rocks. I set the frame on the right side on a rock, took pictures of it. And I couldn't tear the thing up. I was really tickled the way it handled, the way it worked off-road. So, you know, this is a fun truck all the way around. But it, uh, you know, it, it's a class of its own. And it, it does well with a trailer. It, you know, you got to learn some of the, the, the little, uh, you know, like all vehicles have their way of doing things once you learn the secrets to driving them. And this, also the steering's that way. Driving down the highway, I, you know, it, it's pretty tight steering and it's heavy. This is a recirculating ball, not a rack and pinion like most half tons, like all half tons do. So it has the same steering characteristics of a heavy duty. And it steers great down the road because it doesn't take much effort. That's and, true. But if you're parallel parking, it takes a lot of effort. Yeah. So I thought, I didn't really like that, but I was looking underneath the hood there. It looks like, it, you know, it's a lot of these diesels, the bigger ones, have hydraulic boost off the power steering pump, not a vacuum boost. This one, I can't find the lines to go from the pump to the to the power steering mechanism. It looks like it's got an electric motor on it, so this may be an electric boost. I mean, that could be kind of, that's how electric or hydraulic or traders work. They have an electric boost. So I'll find out more about that, but uh, you know, a lot of room in this truck. It's, it, a lot of room. It, it's got a lot of, you know, it feels heavy. It does feel heavy, yeah. but it feels also large enough. Like I said, there's five adults that can fit in here. Yeah. I don't know if that yeah. visor, can you see it in the camera? I don't know if you can. I can see the shade in the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> just came out of the mountains, but you know, this is uh, it's there's a lot to say for this truck, and I the more I drive it, the more I like it. And so, it's uh, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice truck, it's not as quite as big as I'm used to, but it's it's I mean, like I said, you can fit five people in it, it's it goes when you ask it to, it can haul a, a nice little trailer with a nice little load. And yeah. if not, I mean, driving it around town's got to be fun without a trailer. Well, visibility is great. This has got the little cutout down mm -hmm. in the doors, like semis, like what Ford's done. So you can see the mirror better and have better visibility, which is what you want when you pull on the trailer. Yep. You know, this is, uh, these are loaded. This one here, and my goodness, is like 58,000 and change. That's not bad for a decent-sized truck. This is a prototype, so we don't have all the, the facts on it. But, yeah, it's 58,285. Okay. But 18-inch uh, wheels, all-terrain tires, and these tires are great. I've been driving through a lot of deep snow up here. We've had a lot of snow this year in Colorado. But, 
yeah, of course, we, we showed you the back of the back room, all the room in the back seat that folds up, it has storage, lockable storage. Are you going to slow that guy down? <laughs> yep, I, that's why I didn't go. I thought better of it. Yes, yeah, sir. 30 foot trailer? Yeah, I thought better of it. Yeah, well, 30 foot takes a little yeah. longer to go through the intersection. If it was a little horse trailer and didn't have a horse, I would have whipped right in, but. Yeah. Well, this is nice to have it set up for a gooseneck where you it got is. the factory ball, you got the brake controller, and it's in a place where you can reach it pretty well. Yeah, got, it's right here. I, I can't tell what the numbers mean now. I've got this set at three because we've got gigantic brakes on the trailer behind us, but it keeps showing us all these numbers, so I guess that means that's what you're pushing, huh? That is what I'm pushing half on the yes. So it tells you what your gain setting is, or what to what, what how I'm much pushing, is, yes. Yeah, the pressure you're putting on the brakes. Using. Yeah. But so if I, I lock them up, I bet means. you'd be at three. Yeah. Some of the controls are a little hard to, to see. The front ones are, are, are pretty well. they got knobs everywhere, which I like. The other side, the light switch is a knob, which I like. But then there's several switches over there. One that lowers and raises your headlights, your fog lights. You can't really see them. You can't see them without moving your head over, taking your eyes off the road. So I'm kind of a, I'm not a fan of that. This I does mean, have power tilt and telescope. You probably already covered that. Very, very nice power tilt and telescope. <laughs> And the gauges are weird. It's a graphic, so you, when you first start up, you got to wait a few seconds to actually see what gear you're in, because that's a graphic. That's the first truck I've seen do that. And it's also, this has got the Ison transmission, which is, you know, nice it's owned mostly by Toyota, and the Ram uses it in their heavy-duty, and the Hino uses it, so it's a heavy-duty transmission. I'm sure this is a little different model than what's in the Rams, because this looks smaller when you look at it underneath. But it is a heavy-duty transmission, yeah, and it's... There's some things, some more characteristics that I'm learning about this truck is that when you first start up when it's super cold outside, and it keeps it telling me that we got go. low outside temperature, it, it constantly tells me that, and I know that, but uh, it won't start, it won't go in reverse, it won't go in forward until it warms up it a little bit. Up. It may almost take a minute, especially in reverse, you're just sitting there until it warms up, which is, I guess, good, good though. to build up line pressure yes. and to torque over to working. So there's more of the other characteristics that I'm learning about this truck, but... Uh, I, I even like the way it looks. I mean, did you like the nose of it? How it I like the nose of it. I, I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. I've got... I, I mean, it's it's really nice, and the, I, I wouldn't say it's brushed aluminum. Maybe it is. It might be plastic. I don't like, it might be plastic. Yeah. But I don't like this uh, graphic line in here that kind of throws off the, the feeling of it for me. Yeah. The nice white stitching. There's leather or hard black plastic. And that's nice and cushiony up there. Then you Very get into nice the hard plastic on the door again. But yeah. It does have that aluminum look plastic that's around everything, mm -hmm. you know, your air conditioning ducts. And then right in the glove box, it's got this thing that looks kind of like a graphite. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, it like you were saying, it yeah, up. it throws off the theme here. But it is very, very quiet, considering, I, I mean, I, I have three Cummins, and I can hear them every time I get the, in them. But this is very, very quiet. Yeah, I thought you were Cummins, Chick. It's, I like them. <laughs> well, the, yes, it has laminated windshield. Okay. And this V8 is quiet, much more quiet than what you see in the Rams, mm -hmm. Cummins. Mm -hmm. You know you're in a diesel. This one, you may think you're in a gas engine if you didn't know. Yeah, if you didn't know and you didn't see the badges on it, you would definitely guess that this is a gas. It's so yeah. quiet. Uh, even I mean, even when I get on it, it's it's quiet, which is which is good. And we didn't come down a big hill today. I did that with the, the fast lane truck folks the other day, but this does not have an exhaust brake. Yeah. And, you know, the Cummins guy interviews that they could have put it in there, but you know, Nissan stories that Ison transmission will grade shift well enough you don't need it. But I haven't. That's not been my experience. I think it still needs an exhaust brake. And coming down the big hills, I have not seen where this Ison grade shifts as well as you know the other trucks out there that have a good tow mode uh, the way it shifts. So that's one place that I'm not quite happy with it. I'd like to see the exhaust brake, and I'd like to see the grade shifting, you know, upscaled where it, it kicks in like at 60 miles an hour. I mean, we got to kick in once at 65. We got to kick in, you know, in the 30s when you're on the off ramp. But that's not really where you need it. You need it when you're going on the down highway. the hill. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, there's a few things that I would I would change out of it. Overall, I'm I'm, I'm liking this truck. I like the truck. I'd buy one. Yeah, crew cab, a six one. and a half foot bed. So you know it's lined up more in line with what the other the competition is doing. There's enough room in the back. There's, I mean, you can throw a mid-sized four wheeler in the back if you're wanting to go four wheeling. Yeah, this one might pick a full size. You have to tell you, Dad, but yeah. I think a Rancher would fit because this is a you know six and a half and it's a normal width. Mm -hmm. 
It's got the light tailgate. I love the, the, the cargo management. It's got the rails yep. everywhere. I think that's a very, very excellent uh, choice. And they, they started that whole, uh, that whole uh, era of having cargo management and the rails. Heated yeah. seats, heated steering wheel. This is a all, all the heats are, are, all the seats are heated. That's nice. Yeah, and the back row. This is good. I mean, this is. I think there's two versions ahead of this. Maybe the SL and then the, the very top end. But this is very well equipped. This Pro 4X. And it's got so many uses. You can go out and chase coyotes. Go out and do all these things on the weekend. Go climb hills and hook up to your trailer That's and fun. go. Yeah. Or you can just drive around town. Yes, indeedy. Got all the modern luxuries, and it's, it's, it's a good little truck. Yeah, it is. It's uh, you know, it's, it's it's a real decent two two batteries to start it. You know, it's the EGR cooler. I like it's on the outside. Some decent have a lot of problems with EGR coolers, and this one is a very good place to, to work on if you had to do that. But it, uh, it we're back to having that. Light duty three quarter ton or heavy okay. duty half yeah, ton. Heavy duty or half ton. Yeah, yeah. We're right there. Yeah, so it's uh, you know it's it's not the first time it's been done. So hopefully Nissan will you know, keep it longer than what the big three from Detroit did. Mm -hmm. Buttons I need to see on this steering wheel. Yeah, they're a little bit confusing. They are. The dash layout's nice, but you got to scroll through it to get to some of the other things mm -hmm. that you'd want to know. Well, since I've been driving, the fuel economy's gone up, Ken. Well, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying I'm a lead foot? Uh, you might. It could be. It could be. Okay, your compass. Oh, tire pressures. If I drive this a little longer, I'll probably figure out all the little... Cues and little things perks that and extras. Make me happy, because I figured out how to make it go faster. <laughs> And the, the regular brakes are great on it. You know, it's it's got 14 inch rotors like the heavy duties do. Mm -hmm. We're certainly being ball steering like the heavy duties do. I just got to figure out how the boom, what the boost is is controlled by. <coughs> oh, I got DEF fluid in here. Yeah, and they've done is a great job space? arranging where the openings are back with the filler cap. Come on, Dodge or Ram or whoever's putting the DEF in. It's kind of a pain in the butt, and I'm guessing that there's enough space in there. Yeah, this, this one. one does. There's their gap. They're not, you know, rams are really close together. Mm -hmm. And GM puts them under the hood. Under where the hood where it's a pain. No fun to do. So this is real similar to how Ford designed theirs. I think they've copied a lot of things from Ford. I mean, the mirrors setup is real similar. You know, the gooseneck setup is similar. And the brake control, I'm going to guess, is the Concha, you know, the cousin to the Prodigy, just like what Ford does. Uh, so... I guess if you were on copy somebody, you would, co you would copy the number one selling truck. At least that's what I would do. So floor it! I know it's 35, you can't floor it. We <laughs> floor it up to, oh, we're done. We're done. Uh, Sorry, that guys. That was a quick run up there. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> gotta find, find more runway to get up to you know, 70 miles an hour. I can miles. stop, but I don't think the person behind me would like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As cold as it is, it's probably up to 30 now. I mean, it's warm, but you know, still a few bicycles running around and people are jogging on this road. 26 degrees. Yeah, I don't think you'd find me out here doing my my walk. Sometimes it's nice to run in the cold. Yeah, if I was young like you, I probably would be into that. But look at it, 40 miles an hour. Now you can yeah, floor it. Well, we're already doing pretty oh, good. Okay. We got a turn right here. was fun. Do so you like this truck? I like this truck. I could buy one of these. I could drive one of these. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, have my one and, ton. And, and still have your Cummins, you know. Mm -hmm. that, that should be a lot of points and gains there. Try not to rip my gates off. There we go. Which dog can I replace? Yeah, really. You got three choices there. I like the two on the right, or two on the left. <laughs> she want us to want us to hit our air horn. Her cookie. In. Plus, there's so many cookies around here from them too. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see if we can do it. Oh, then those darn gates. The horses. Yeah, the horses. Say, what's going on here? Somebody's been opening our gate. 
I was gonna count. Uh, one, two, three. Welcome to SEMA, Mr. Truck. Okay.